Do you love sports in America? Then you will want to add Patriot Sports Radio to your playlist right now. Patriot Sports Radio is a grassroots podcast network celebrating America's common ground of sports fandom. Eric, John, Chris, and the coach all bring their unique points of view to the table where everything from the upcoming games to current events can come into play. They are 100% America first and post two episodes a week on Mondays and Thursdays. Listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and your favorite podcast app. They also have radio swag and are on Instagram, too. Find all their links on Linktree. Just go to Linktree and search Patriot Sports. Add Patriot Sports Radio to your playlist right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. And remember, the Brian Craig Show podcast is available on all podcast platforms, including Spotify and iHeartRadio. Okay, so these protests at the homes of the Supreme Court justices, I know there'll, there'll be some exception to what I'm about to say, and so I'll get a tweet or a DM from somebody, no, it's happened before. Uh, there has never been an instance in my memory where mass groups of people went to the homes of sitting members of the Supreme Court of the United States and tried to intimidate them into changing a decision they have already decided on. Because if you remember, what leaked out was the draft of the decision. And I want to play this clip here in the beginning. This is Chuck Schumer, who sounds like he's about to go hoarse. Listen to this. This is Now, this is a, this is a couple years back. This is at an, uh, a uh, pro-abortion rally back in 2020. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. Yeah, you know, that's back in 2020, but they're now they're they're taking that to heart. And, you know, some of these Supreme Court justices have young children at home. And these are although they're upscale, they're residential neighborhoods. These are not the, the ones I because I've seen online some of this stuff. These are not gated communities. No, they're beautiful neighborhoods. Actually, they showed one where they were on the street and they showed the street and the homes are just gorgeous. They're like just beautiful homes, not mansions, yeah. not mansions, but very nice homes. Many it's mansions. Very, yeah, it's um, very pretty neighborhoods, you know, it's but like, there's no security, right? Like, you could just walk right on the these, street. These are like the, like the size of Tom Cruise's house in Risky Business, right? His parents' house. It's like that level of house. These are – it's a rich – Rich neighborhood, but these, nice. you know, but yeah. And, you know, what's going on here is this intimidation of the Supreme Court that's going on. It's, it's kind of like in those days back in the Old West, you've seen this in the movies, but these things really happen where the sheriff would have someone in the jailhouse and the town decided, well, we want to lynch him. And right. a lynch mob would go to the, to the county jail or to the sheriff's office and then well, they were the, Democrats, the, too. Yeah, the sheriff would have to stand outside with uh, a deputy if he was lucky uh, with a six-shooter and a shotgun or something and try to get this massive crowd of mm-hmm. from this lynch mob from trying to bust in the jail. And what you have here with these handmade tail ladies and all these others at the Supreme Court justices' homes, private homes, is these are this is a lynch mob. And, and, and people should be frightened by this. And I, and I got to tell you, the media, shame on the media, you know, this dishonest, low-life media that we have, all this talk about January 6th, um, this, is at the, this is at these people's homes. This, is not at the, this isn't at the Supreme Court building. I don't recall Trump ever talking like this. Sending people to people's homes? No, or, no. or doing anything where it was like, you know, you, you're going to pay the price and you've yeah. unleashed this or that. Yeah. And I yeah. know this is from a few years ago, but you're, it sets a tone. That's right. And this is the tone of the Democrats. They're the party of intimidation. They're the party of their bullies. They use fear tactics. You know, the politicians use fear to control their voters. So, of course, the voters are going to use the same tactics 
when they're trying to control people and control the messaging and get people to do what they want, they can't use reason and logic. So they have to use violence and threats Mm -hmm. and bullying to get their way. And if they don't get their way, they completely lose their mind. They can't handle it because their way is the only way. They can't understand. It's like when that on the view that Sonny Hostin last week said to the black conservative, well, I just don't understand black conservatives or Latino conservatives. Well, you know what, Sonny, you don't need to understand. I'm sorry if you don't understand that people don't think like you. Yeah. But in this country, everybody has their own perspective and their own point of view. And we don't all have to agree. Not everybody loves abortion or is pro-choice or anything like that. I really just wish they would pass this already so the protesting would stop at their homes because that it, it would, it's a it'll, done it's deal. It's not going to stop. And you don't think so, even no, if it passed. No, because they can't change it then. And not only is it a lynch mob, this is a regular, although upscale, residential neighborhood. There are families in that neighborhood that oh, yeah. have and elderly yeah. people and yes. young children in multiple homes. It's very dangerous. Um, I saw this earlier on the Fox News website. Let me read this to you. Douglas Blair, a news editor for the Daily Signal said the pro-choice protest outside Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh's home were one of the scariest things he has ever witnessed. Mm -hmm. He called the protest an attempt at intimidation and pointed out that the Biden administration has failed to condemn these protests. This isn't – there are places that's okay to protest. It is okay to protest in the National Mall. It is okay to protest on the steps of the Supreme Court building where you always see this. Um, but going to people's private homes can they call is, the police and is have, threatening. Them, have them leave? Well, the thing about it is, you know, because it's I mean, not, I think they have protection. It's not a, um, it's not a, a gated community. So the sidewalk and the street, that's public uh, property. You know, if I was on the Supreme Court, considering the contentious nature of, well, it's always it was like this in the seventies and sixties too, but. I would live in a gated community. I don't understand. It's a beautiful yeah. neighborhood where they live, but their house is literally the front door, like 15 feet from the street. Um, and if they got a beautiful front porch, whoever's yeah. home it is, I think it was Kavanaugh. I don't know, but it was really nice. I would live in a gated community because I would think, you know what, um, this could things are going to come up, and, and, and I don't want to put my family in danger. They certainly have the money to afford it. I don't understand why they don't live in more protected environments because it's because and why they don't put their homes n- nothing, in, a, in like a trust where they can't search and find their address nothing has ever happened like this to the supreme court before it's never happened before and you know li- liberals liberals got a lot of problems i mean they're all mental patients when you see the they're mental patients yeah, and y- y- sure. you've seen them doing these protests over the weekend at churches that don't have anything to do with what's going on in washington yeah they had and, a priest on the news this morning talking about it yeah and, you know, when when you see what's going on at the Supreme Court houses, I would imagine, I would imagine the Supreme Court justices and their families have left. They probably bugged out. How can they be there? I would think so. It remi- I would. It reminds me of what happened to Tucker Carlson a couple of years ago. Remember Antifa went to Tucker's house when his wife was home and she was hiding, was in the closet or the bathroom. Yeah, that was and, scary. You know, and, and then he moved. These are uh, scary you know. people. These are scary people. Yeah. And, and it's, it's They're funny. They're spoiled Brats is what they are. They're well, spoiled yeah. little babies. Yeah. They <laughs> like to impugn Trump and MAGA for one event that happened one time. Um, that he had nothing to do with. That he had nothing to do with. And the only person killed was killed by a Capitol Police officer for, for no Babbitt. reason. And, uh, and, and they, but they totally ignore what they do and how they bully and harass. Yeah. And I think going to somebody's home is much more of a threat than going to the Capitol. It's, it's way That's out of public bounds. public building. Way out of bounds. Way out of bounds. And, you know, th- this happened. Such an interesting thing, you know, the, the double standards here. Yeah. You know, thank the Lord that Elon Musk has bought Twitter. He has not taken Twitter over yet. You know, this, the addresses of the Supreme Court justices was given out over social media and yeah. maps and everything else. And did they, doxy, which is a violation of terms of service, I thought, of the social media platforms. I have not heard any stories of any of these people being forever banned from social media for organizing lynch bombs with directions to the homes of Supreme Court justices. I've never, I've never seen anything like this. You know, this is why, you know, Elon Musk just finally, the Babylon B banning from Twitter, that was, that was like the final straw with Elon Musk. You know, it takes an immigrant to appreciate, you know, freedom in this country because the left are tyrants. 
And this this type of harassment that's going on with the Supreme Court is very, very, very You should not be allowed to dox anybody. It should not be allowed. It should be it should be criminally prosecuted. Well, because you're doing it for the sole purpose of intimidation and threatening. You're not doing it to be nice. It's it's to be intimidating and to threaten. And I think they can easily track who posts these things, and they should go to jail for what now, they do. There's no punishment for some this of kind the, of behavior. Yeah. Now, and I'll say, you know, some of the members of Congress in both houses have been talking quite a bit about this ruling. And I think some of these people, in particular Mitch McConnell, is egging things on and trying to cause trouble. Mitch McConnell— Oh, yes, he is. It, um, over the weekend started talking about— uh, Federal legislation passing outlawing abortion. Why do you think he's doing and, that? And uh, to stir the pot. Uh, he's trying to cause problems and conflicts. And what he really is trying to do is, um, if I, by the way, I bit my tongue mm. earlier. I was chewing gum today. Oh, I never chew gum. I've done that, yeah. And I have not chewed gum. I cannot remember. I, I, you had bought some gum. I chewed some gum yesterday. And today, I guess you're out of practice. And I have not chewed gum in years. And for some reason, I grabbed a couple sticks of gum. And today, I bit my tongue. Were you walking at the same time? Um, walking, talking. You know, I don't know. I guess you can't walk. And I chew bit gum my at tongue the same time. like right away. My tongue has swallowed to about four times. At least it feels like it's about four times its normal size. Oh my goodness! So no um, bleeding though. Not that I know of, but it it um, it'll heal quickly. It hurts. It hurts. I'll give you a Benadryl, especially later. when you you know you talk for a living and your your tongue is very you know it's 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 your it's very important. I've done that before. Oh it's, my goodness, uh, it's very. I don't like to chew gum too much. I get like it yeah. hurts my jaw. I yeah, get, I'm not a, I'm not a gum chewer. So I'm not I, a gum yeah, chewer. I guess you'll be avoiding it. But now. anyway, back back to this. Okay, so Mitch McConnell, I think, is trying to get the Christians out there more and try to get a conflict going, like in Charlottesville with the. You know the white supremacist and Black Lives Matter. Him saying that definitely is he, is to stir the pot and, and stoke those that. Fires. That's exactly right. And Mitch McConnell and some of these others need to stop talking about it because you know we it, they're trying to give this perception. Oh, a conservative leaked this out. I don't think so. It had to be a liberal because we had won this. A conservative mm-hmm. in there. These a conservative inside the court. A clerk. These are law school graduates from top schools. They're very, they're smart people. They know we won it. So to let it out in advance could only why would damage it, that. It, why would no, a conservative do that? It There's makes no, no benefit. Sense. No. Well, the left are all over the media trying to, oh, well, obviously a conservative. No, that co- doesn't make sense. There's no gain in this for the conservatives. The best thing for a conservative to do is keep a tight lip, and then it's just, boom, the ruling comes out. It's done. This was done by a leftist, mm-hmm. and it was done for a number of reasons. But uh, Mitch McConnell and other members of the government that are talking about this publicly – are really, I, I don't think, being uh, – they're being irresponsible in trying to um, cause some problems. Before we get back to some issues, though, I wanted to mention, um, before I forget, because I made a vlog about this and put on my YouTube channel over the weekend. I went to the RV show um, at the South Florida Fairgrounds in Palm Beach, which is a short drive from Mar-a-Lago. And if you go on my YouTube channel, you can um, see it. And the reason I made that vlog, I went to the RV show last year. And the RV show is pretty cool. I'm, you know, and you get to because you get to go inside all the RVs, and it's it's kind of a cool thing. And some of these uh, RVs are really, really upscale. The, the, uh, there was one I went into. The RV, it was one of those travel buses, mm. three hundred eighty nine thousand dollars, and it was used. They are so overpriced. I don't understand people that plop down three hundred thousand unless you're like just a celebrity and you have money to burn. Well, you know, so, and those. The, depreciate the minute they go off the lot. Like a car. And we watch a lot of those RV videos, even though we don't live the RV life, and they are very expensive to maintain, and they fall apart very quickly, it seems. I watch, we watch a lot of these van lifers and RV lifer people on YouTube, and I I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I've been camping before, not in one of these huge things, when I was a kid a few times, but... You see all these... Being on the road. Yeah, you see all these people on YouTube, and they tell these great stories. Oh, we're so free. We sold all our possessions. We sold our house, and now we just ride the you know the the RV around. And it you, you go and take a tour of these things, and they're very nice. They're very expensive. But uh, when I take the tour, one one of the things I talked about in my video was yeah, it looks big, it's spacious, but there's no one's living in it yet. There's nothing in it. Once you get in there with all your stuff, it's right. a it's a mess. Um, but but anyway, the reason I brought this up it's a it's another example of how Joe Biden has wrecked the American economy. I went to the same RV show last year, Mm -hmm. same weekend last year, and uh, I did not make a YouTube video for my 
YouTube channel last year, and I went back because last year was so cool. I wanted to do it for my make a video for my channel this year. This year, the RV show is much less than half the size of last year. I mean, it, why do you think that it's is? It's about I would say this year's RV show is about ten or fifteen percent the size of the one last year. And what the about the number one. of people? Oh, there was hardly anybody there, and. When I went last year, it had – there were dealers and representatives from the RV companies with all these uh, RVs like I couldn't imagine. And that was at the height of COVID. Like the – yeah, those um, – what are those those uh, trailers that people have that they're kind of retro that are silver? Yeah, the um, – I like those. ones I'm talking yeah. about? Like uh, the, the company that makes those was there. And they those had, are my favorite, and I can't think of the name. They had about 20 of them. They had a van. They had the different size of the trailer. Yeah, that's the kind I'd get. They look and, like a silver bullet almost. You know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're, they're really they're, cool. And, Sus, some stream. Airstream. 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 Yeah, those are my favorite. And they're, they're pretty cool. They're very nice. And when I went this weekend, it was about 10 or 15 per, of the, percent of the size that it was last year. Yeah. No real, uh, no manufacturers were there. Last year, there were manufacturers all over the place. Um, only gas has a lot to do with it. It's so expensive yeah. right now to live an RV life. And you had heard from some listeners. Well, it's more than video. that. Yeah. It's more than, um, there were, uh, hardly any dealers there that were trying to sell. It was mostly private sales, people trying to unload their RV. Right. Right. Okay. And it was, and they there can't were afford it. very few people. And when I went last year, um, I had to pay to park and pay to get in. This year, free parking, no ticket to get wow. in. Wow. Same venue. And there was hardly anyone there. And um, it's, the, it's the Biden economy. It's obviously gas prices are a big part of it. But inflation overall, people can't afford to, to, to drive these things. Well, and, you know, with cars, they're adding on these fees now. And I wonder if they have fees on these because they, oh, they did no, have they, a major price, like a, a and then it was like discounted. They were heavily discounted. But, well, so even they at those say, prices. but the ones that you showed were nice, but they sure as hell weren't worth a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, we paid less for our house. Yeah, it was eighteen years ago. But I can't imagine, like I said, somebody you showed one that was three hundred thousand. It was very nice, but I said to you, this is this, for five years ago. Or even three years ago, three hundred thousand, you would have had something that like a celebrity would own. It would be so tricked out and amazing. And this was more basic and not so many frills. It really, I couldn't um, believe the price of it. It really caught me off guard. I um, went way out of my way. And that was used to said. go yeah. to this. It's it's not close to our house at all. And uh, I went way out of the way to go there because, and and I had a good time. And if you watch the video, it's I I took tours and it's it's really cool video. Yeah, RVs but are fun. I was in shock at how small it is. It was compared to before, and you know every aspect of the American co economy has been wrecked by Joe Biden. There is well, not a trickle effect. A too. single part of our economy that um, has not been wrecked by Joe Biden. Now, I wanted I, well, I wanted to ask real quick from the audience if they could just if you live in RV life. Um, and you watch Brian's video, and I'm just curious um, if you live that life. Have you? Are you thinking about leaving it? Is you know what are the costs exactly per month, and uh, what are the pros and cons of this? I'm really for you, yeah. Because I'm sure there's people yeah. out there that do this that that are living in RVs. I'm curious. Now, last week began the Bogo Extravaganza for Mike Lindell. And over the weekend, Mike Lindell added a whole bunch of other BOGOs on top of the ones that were there last oh, week. Awesome. So if you go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener specials, look at all of the BOGOs. And BOGO is buy one, get one free with our promo code Kane at checkout. Uh, buy one, get one free on the classic standard MyPillow. Buy one, get one free on the Giza Elegance MyPillows, which Kathy and I got four of Those last are week. Those amazing. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. I love them. Um, Buy one, get one free on the MyPillow 100% uh, Giza Cotton Dream Sheets. The Tau Sets are BOGO, and there's all kinds of other BOGOs there. A whole bunch they added, including there's a uh, MyPillow has a bunch of blankets of different sizes and throw blankets and everything else on top of a lot of other discounts. But go there right now. This is really a time, if you've not gotten involved in the MyPillow lifestyle like Kathy and I have, this is your chance during the BOGO extravaganza. Go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, for these incredible deals. You can also order by phone, 
1-800-716-4879. Promo code Kane. K-A-N-E. Getting fit and staying fit are top priorities in your life, but you need the right equipment to stay on track. WholesomeTruth.com have all the modern gear and clothing you need to live a healthier lifestyle. It takes a little effort to be healthy, but it's not hard with the right tools of the trade. Take it from the experts at WholesomeTruth.com. The items in this shop are carefully curated by the shop's owner, who's a chiropractor, so he knows what you need to get in shape safely and effectively. Make sure to check out the wheel trainer and the high-density no-slip mat the adjustable fitness water bag the fitness body trainer harness they also have items like the professional deep muscle massager the face slimming massager heater knee pads and that's just the beginning for your modern fitness needs visit dr owned wholesometruth.com make sure to use the coupon code wisdom and save 10 percent off your purchase wholesometruth.com Cryptocurrency. It's what everyone's talking about. Have you wanted to get involved in crypto but didn't know what it is or where to begin? Welcome to Crypto Class 101. Class is in session. If you've wanted to get into crypto but didn't know where to begin, classes at crypto101.com.au is a great place to start. At cryptoclass101.com.au, you will learn how to invest in cryptocurrency through in depth online, one on one, private training sessions. They will provide you with all the knowledge and tools you need to start confidently trading in cryptocurrency and accumulating profits. You will learn what cryptocurrency is, how to buy it, and what are crypto wallets. You will be guided step-by-step through every process. You will never be alone, and you will gain vast amounts of practical knowledge through these online courses. Start learning right now at CryptoClass101.com.au. That's CryptoClass101.com.au. Are you or someone you love battling low self-esteem due to teasing? You are not alone. Author Cher Major has been where you are right now and shares her experiences in her book, My Big God's Masterpiece, available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. This must-read book is a riveting account of a coming-of-age girl who was desperately fighting for self-love because the environment she was exposed to negatively influenced her self-esteem. Her life was difficult and took her down a mentally dark path, which could have led to a destructive lifestyle, and eventually even worse. In this heart-wrenching and eye-opening story, readers will discover why it is important to grow to love every part of their face and bodies, despite what the beauty industry deem as the perfect face or facial features. Young girls and ladies will find encouragement who have had similar struggles. Most importantly, with God being our creator, readers will find He has not forsaken them, and they can find validation and comfort in Him and be empowered to push past the beauty industry ideals and standards and grow to love and appreciate the features he has affixed them with and begin making whole the rejected parts. My Big God's Masterpiece from author Cher Major is available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Okay, so I put up another poll on Brian's YouTube, Brian Craig. If you go to the community section, we have a bunch of polls there. And the latest one I put up yesterday, will Dr. Oz win? So what do you think the breakdown of that is in the poll? I've not, looking I've at not the poll. looked at the poll. So Do you think it's majority yes or no? I think the majority no. It's majority yes. Really? 63% said, you know, we've had 1,100 votes. That's a lot. Uh, will Dr. Oz win? 63% said yes. 37% said no. And somebody made the comment... Um, a lot of people think he's a rhino and then somebody made a comment. I wish Trump would have waited for the primary because it's very contentious in Pennsylvania right now. And yeah. I agree. Maybe, yeah. you know, there's the problem with Trump, with Dr. Oz, there's a lot of good candidates running against him that are extremely well likable yeah. and viable. And I agree. Maybe he should have waited for the primary, but I feel Dr. Oz is his friend and because Dr. Oz, um, they've probably been friends since Trump was on his show. And that was what, before he got elected yeah. in 2015, maybe I, 2016. Wasn't, he, wasn't, 
Didn't Trump go on Dr. Oz when he was running? Maybe. Yeah, he did. And that's what I'm saying in 2016. Yeah, I think he, he was went on, on during the show. when he was running. So yeah. they've probably been friends ever since. Dr. Oz did come out and defend him during COVID and all that stuff. So, you know, Trump loves that. And I mm-hmm. think they're friends. They went to the same college. Um, so they do have a lot in common in that they're both successful businessmen and all that. Um, they appreciate each other, respect each other. But there seems to be a lot of obstacles for Dr. Oz, Dr. Oz to overcome. But according to our poll, uh, and it's mostly, I would say, Republicans voting in this one, um, they feel he will win. That ultimately, I think maybe when people get into the voting booth and they're sitting there contemplating, uh, they'll they'll say Oz. But this other candidate, Kathy um, Barnett. It, Barnett, she's very good. And she has such a compelling personal story with abortion with her mother and being a victim of rape. She She was conceived. Um, you rarely hear people speak out about that, that, that are conceived that way. And I'm sure it happens a lot more than you realize. And for her as a black woman, who's a Republican to now be running for Senate to me is an absolutely American success story. Well, I mean, she had okay. all the odds there's against a, her in, in this society a few things. growing up okay. and, and here she is. She's amazing. There's a few things. Okay. Um, I just want to get out out the box here, okay? And I know, you know, Dr. Ra, whoever wins is going to be a Republican, right? Because Republican primary. I think so, um, yeah, of course. But one thing that happens in primaries, you don't, you don't hear people talk about this so much because it hasn't happened in a long time with the primary. But what happens, it ha- well, I, I guess it happened with, with Trump, with Jeb and stuff like this. What happens a lot of times in primaries, because when it's a primary, everybody's in the same party. Right. They get really nasty, like this Pennsylvania Senate race, and someone may win the primary, mm-hmm. but they're so damaged in the public by all the infighting in the party that it damages them in the long term. And and about Dr. Ross, say a few things about this and then the this this lady who's doing better in the polls now. Um when he came up on stage when Trump was speaking, I didn't hear people boo him. And I was listening for – in fact, I went back on my YouTube live stream on Saturday morning. I played it a couple times, and I know some of you were in there in that live stream. He, Dr. Oz was not booed when he went up on stage when Donald Trump brought him up, and he spoke there for a moment or two. So I think – you know, um, But I sensed a hesitancy in the crowd. They weren't as jazzed up as yeah, they would over Kerry Lake. I really Lake. did. But, you could, it was, but this you woman – this woman that she's doing, you know, she seems very nice. I saw her on television today, and I think you, you told me her mother was impregnated with her when the mother was eleven. That's or right, by a twenty-one-year-old man. And that's a she had a good moment in the debate. She's got a very interesting, compelling story. She does. And conservatives love black Republicans because it shows we're not racist. You know, I get I get all that, but that doesn't mean she's electable on the state level against a Democrat. I don't know. You know, um, well, that's true. That's what you have. You know, to that's consider. what you have to think about. She said today, and because I started following her on Twitter, she said today that Oz and the other guy, Daniels, I think McDaniel's, have spent sixty million dollars between the two with ads bashing each other. Yeah, that's crazy. And she has stayed out of that. Okay, she has stayed out of that fight. It's been Oz with this guy going back and forth. That may help. She her. has spent two million dollars, and now she's creeping up, and she's just behind Oz. But I think Oz is still ahead. And like I said, I think that needs to be. If you're in Pennsylvania, what you really need to consider is who will win the election in the fall. And the person that's going to win is the person that Trump is going to back. Yeah. And you might have to overlook a few things. There's things people just can't seem to get past. But I've said this before. If I was in Pennsylvania, I would vote for Dr. Oz because I feel he is very good friends with Trump. And I feel for Oz to come out during his show during COVID and defend Trump took a lot of guts. Yeah. And that showed me that he's very loyal to Trump. Oh, and yeah. That he was willing to put his reputation on the line as a doctor to defend Trump during a time when nobody was defending him. I think that needs to be really considered when you're voting for this man. And and you really have to get rid of these. Look well, what happened in Pennsylvania. Listen, you really need to get rid I, of these um, rhinos. I got a call from a listener today on the radio who is a well-known person who called in and didn't identify their true oh, identity when they curious. called in. But they uh, but th- this was on the radio this morning, if you hear me on the radio this yeah. morning. He was at Mar-a-Lago 
for the film premiere the other night. Oh, exciting. And he said that President Trump said. But you knew who it, who it was. I know who. Yeah, I know who the guy is. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't identify himself fully when he called me on the right. air today. It, and uh, it was interesting. He um, he said he went to Friendly Tire and bought tires there, too. Wow. So from Mar-a-Lago to Friendly Tire. Maybe he'll tell Trump about Friendly Tire. Yeah. He could put him on his Lamborghini that's right. or his, his limos or whatever he drives That's right. right. That's right. Melania could stop in and get tires any day. So, so what it, well, I'm sure Trump but anyway, appreciates this, a good deal. But this, anyway, uh, this gentleman um, – Spoke to President Trump at Mar-a-Lago at the film premiere the other night, and President Trump told him that um, after the midterms, if he has a sweep in the midterms, he's going to make the announcement that he's waiting. And I mean, that, I, I That's was, what I, we had said. And all I know along. a lot of people say, "Well, we've been saying that." Well, we've been suspecting that. But I talked to someone today who was told that directly by President Trump himself. Didn't just the we other say day. that on this show that he was going to wait till November? Yeah, and right to now, see what happens right now. President Trump has fifty to zero victories. He's had fifty primary victories. And if if we, he has one loss, believe me, that's all they'll and, – and Dr. Oz is a high-profile yeah. one. So what Brian so, is saying is if you want Trump to run, vote for Dr. Oz because you know, it might affect his a, decision. A lot of, I know a lot of people are upset with me about this. This is my thought, okay, on this. I'm going to do whatever Trump tells me to do. Yeah. I'm going to vote for whoever Trump tells me to vote for. I don't care who – I'm, I'm, I'm not voting for Dr. Oz because I'm in Florida, not Pennsylvania. Right. But – President Trump. Oh, and he also talked. This guy that I talked to, he talked to to him about his health because President Trump was talking to him about how they're talking about how I'm old and I'm not healthy. He says he's five as fit as I've ever been. And this was this was just at the film premiere at Mar-a-Lago the other night. So the direct he's just source got good genes. Yes, and yeah, and I've got good connections, honey. Huh, get this uh, this conversation really. But um, this um, Donald Trump, he he's going to run in 2024. He's you know, we know this. This is the last time he'll be able to run, okay, be- because he's not a young man, although he's not a mortal man, and he's much, much, you know, he, he, he's in much better shape than anyone else's age. Certainly Biden. But after this, after he's, he's, he's not going to be able to run in 2028. And, no, I don't you know, think he would. This, and so this is our only opportunity yeah. to really, truly get the MAGA agenda back on track is, is for Trump to be back in the White House in 2024. And to do that, he needs to have a clean sweep as much as we possibly can help him with. I think that's and, a really good point and you're these, making. In these midterms. And, yeah. um, and you his re- decision, it seems, is going to be based on what happens in November. Like you said, if he has a sweep and he knows, because we've said this all along, that Trump wants to know – that the Senate and the Congress, that he's going to have them having his back. He's not going to run if he's going to go through this nonsense again. And he's got to get rid of these rhinos and have people in the government that are going to support him. And Dr. Oz definitely has Trump's back. I think that was clear last year during COVID. Very clear. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think we've got to do what Trump says. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we all agree Mitt Romney's a creep now right but we didn't know that when he was running for president against obama and um i don't remember the exact numbers because this has been years now but i do remember this when mitt romney was running for president again he was he ran against obama and obama's re-election we didn't know what a jerk he was then okay so you got to block out of your mind the way mitt romney yeah, is I'm now sure most of us voted for him exactly you know we didn't know but uh, yeah, Steve and I even were with Mitt Romney at uh, Wings Plus in Coral Springs. We had no idea. Who knew? You know, he yeah. turned out to be a really weird guy when he had that press conference. I think attacking Trump, Trump, like many, triggered him. Triggered, triggered something in him that he was suppressing. Well, he came out and, ha- and addressed the nation during the campaign in 2015. He's just insane. But before that, we did not know this when he ran for president. Okay, uh, against mm-hmm. uh, Obama in 2012, and. Um, evangelical Christians by the millions would not vote for him because he's Mormon. And he, uh, Obama won Florida in 2012. Mitt Romney lost it because Christians, evangelical Christians by the millions in Florida alone would not vote yeah. for a Mormon. Yeah, it's true. And, and I remember I would tell callers that the callers would call me up, right? Christ, Christian callers. And I, you know, Kathy and I are Christians. Christian callers would say, I'm a Christian. And I cannot vote for a Mormon. A Mormon's a cult. Mormonism's a cult. And I and I would say to them, "Well, who? What would you rather have in the White House? A Mormon or a Muslim?" And I and I thought that was a pretty good way to, to, to you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, they. By the way, a lot of people think Catholics 
are cults. We're yeah. Catholic. A lot of people cults. think that if you're a Catholic, you're in a cult. So they, you yeah. Know. Yeah. But, you know, so sometimes you've got to put some things aside to get the, the greater the, good. The, yeah. Now, it worked out very well for us that Mitt Romney lost because Mitt Romney lost. We had Donald Trump four years later, but we did not know that then, you know. But um, true. So, I, and I know some of you get upset. You think I'm promoting Dr. Oz. I'm not promoting Dr. Oz. I'm promoting President Trump, and 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 I'm doing what President Trump tells me to do because we have um, this. 2028 will most likely be, you know, when when Ron DeSantis is the Republican nominee with his running mate Carrie Lake or someone great like that. That would um, be incredible. 2028 will be the end of President Trump's second term. And uh, he's going to be pretty old. That may be the last election he's involved in. And but I think he'll still be involved in the GOP and in and politics. I think he'll be in his eighties. No, but I think he'll be running the party for a long, long time. He'll be running the party for the rest of his life. Yeah, I, I think. But so. but the the thing is, President Trump has a plan for twenty twenty four, and like it or not, Doctor Oz is part of that plan. Mm-hmm. And. Um, um, that's, and I know, and I, I, believe me, I get what you got there. Any rate, any state you go to, there are, there are candidates that are more MAGA and more conservative than, um, the most popular person that's maybe getting the endorsement just because someone is more conservative or stronger MAGA does not mean they are electable right. at the state level. It's a lot to and, consider. And this lady, I like her a lot, but I don't know anything about her. Um, you know, and, and you got, sometimes you got to be careful. She had a good moment in the debate. Remember Mia Love? She was in Congress in, uh, Utah for one term and she, Mm -hmm. you know, I think she was the mayor of Salt Lake City. Remember she was, she's black and she had a big moment in the press and then she'd be, you know, she got in Congress and everything. And then you, you, what what happens? You know, you know, you, you find out other things. So I, I think we're best served doing at this point. What Trump tells us to do because he's got a plan. Trust Trump. You got and and I I trust in Trump and that's and I you know and say so, and when we talk about this I get I get some people upset with me they're like my only savior is Jesus well Jesus is my savior too okay um, Donald Trump is not I when I you know when I say trust in Trump and he's all we got and he's saving us I don't mean saving our souls saving our country you know this our culture is about to fade away as we know it. But if you believe, and I, that many people feel this way, if you believe that God is working through Trump, oh yes, okay, then you have to trust him and you have to trust his judgment. And like Brian said, sometimes overlook some things um, and try not to focus on Oz's past and what he did on his show. You have to understand that show was produced by Oprah, who's an ultra liberal radical, you know, Obama lover. And he was under contract. And, uh, but like I said, he came out and defended Trump when his show was in its when last it was season, not popular. Um, when it was not a popular thing to do. And if you really feel that God is working through Trump in this culture war, then you need to follow that lead. And th- you know, this I isn't, it's important. this isn't just about Dr. Oz because, you know, the election is a long time from now. Yeah. And then we're going to have the, um, the presidential election, there's congressional elections then too. There's going to be other candidates that we do not like. And the example I always use is I hate Marco Rubio. I cannot stand Marco Rubio. Yeah. Before Trump Nobody likes was him. president, Marco Rubio was public here in Florida talking about amnesty for the illegals all the time. He's a big okay? pander to the Cuban I to can't, the Spanish community. I can't stand him. He's a bum. He's a jerk. And he's a phony. And he hates Trump. But – uh, he's all we got in Florida, and uh, he's he's been loyal to Trump since Trump became president. So I've got to I got to hold my nose and vote for that uh, little Marco Rubio, because if I don't support Marco Rubio, chances are we'll have a Democrat in that Senate seat, and mm. and uh, that I don't want. No. And and President Trump is very very smart, and I think he's done. He's done polling that we will never see. He's done research we'll never see. And he has determined that Dr. Oz has a better chance of winning the statewide general election than the others. Yeah, and and I think that if he does win uh, that, I think it would just be huge. You it know, would Marco, really give Trump the momentum. See, this is what yeah. Trump needs, okay? And, and we've said this for months, 
that he was going to wait till November to see what happened in the election before he announced. And if he does not overturn these seats, I don't think he's going to run. He needs that momentum. He needs it personally and professionally, that momentum to get him going. He needs to go into Washington with all these wins because it shows the power he has, the influence he has. And and it will be different than when he went in there the first time. He will go in wiser and stronger, and he will have the GOP more under his thumb and under control because these rhinos are out of control, and they're playing a game with everybody. And like Mitch McConnell going out and, and, and making threats and getting people all upset about Roe v. Wade and all this stuff, you know, these guys just play a game, and, and they mess with everybody's life, and they get they're agitators. And Trump is trying to get people in there that are going to work with him. And if he can't get those people in there, he might be reluctant to run. He might be like, you know what? I'm not going to run again if I'm going to have to face these jerks all over again and deal with more fake news. You know, the Republicans did nothing to help Trump when he was in there. They were on TV bashing him, a lot of them, and they were working behind the scenes against him. A lot of them were in on this and working against him and all this stuff. He needs people that he can personally Trust. And I'm, I'm not telling you who to vote for, but, you know, you have to consider that when you vote next week. Really weigh the pros and cons. Think about it. Pray about well, it. You know, and, like, and really just think about how the long term effect of this. Yeah. Like here with Marco There's Rubio. There's bigger things at stake. OK, with Marco Rubio here. I had said for months, I am not going to vote for Marco Rubio. Yeah. I'm not going to vote and for I, Marco I, Rubio. I told you to do it. And then um, Trump said, vote for Marco Rubio because we need that seat in the Senate. And... um it was hard for me to do because I had said publicly so long I wasn't – and I right. did it, and I told you all that I did it, by the way. I remember yeah. we went to vote, and you were still on the, way on the, the fence, yeah, and, in the car. and I said to you, I'm voting for him. I don't want to, and I said, you need to vote for him because Trump told you to, and that's what we have to Marco, do. And, little Marco and, and, Rubio. Little Marco, and you did. You came out, and you, yeah, you said, man, that was tough. It was. That was a tough one to do. But you have to – and Marco Rubio, for his credit, I think has voted, voted with Trump most of the time. There's some senators in there that are Republican. I think somebody said the senator from Pennsylvania now, who's a Republican, one of them a vote, has voted with Biden. Like every time. 90% of the yeah. time or something. You need people that are going to truly vote with Trump. He has a plan for this country. He has things. He The, the wall is the biggest. He really wants to get that wall done and get that border locked up and fixed. He's got to have people in there that are going to be with him on certain issues that are important. That's so right. that's our advice. That's take right. it or leave it. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Brian Craig here with a huge announcement from the Thomas Edison of Sleep, the inventor of the My Pillow, Mike Lindell. And My Pillow are now offering a BOGO extravaganza on multiple My Pillow items. Right now at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane, K A N E at checkout, buy one, get free pricing on My Pillow bed sheets, Giza Elegance My Pillows, the six piece My Pillow towel set, and the My Pillow Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows, and so much more. Just go Go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener specials. Use the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout or call toll-free 800-716-4879. 800-716-4879. The Bogo Extravaganza at MyPillow.com with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout. And with each purchase for free, you will get a copy of Mike Lindell's autobiography. Call 800 800- 716-4879 800-716-4879 or go to the radio listener special page at MyPillow.com and use the promo code Kane K-A-N-E No matter who you are, where you live, or your life situation may be in, relationships of all kinds have influenced your life. Both positive and negative relationships have an impact on our physical and mental health and our overall well-being. The book from author Dr. Lamar Spencer, The Depth and Diversity Within Relationships, available on Amazon and the author's website, drlamarspencer.com, offers true accounts of love, loss, joy, and stress. These collections aim to encourage, inspire, 
inspire and share experiences that have helped others just like you navigate relationships. In this must-read book, read about recommendations concerning mindfulness and relationships, as well as recommended keys to building positive relationships and the importance of setting boundaries. You will learn to build more positive and lasting relationships through this book, The Depth and Diversity Within Relationships, from author Dr. Lamar Spencer. Order your copy right now on Amazon and DrLamarSpencer.com. Watch out. A teenage psychopath is on the loose at the New York World's Fair, and four brilliant yet unlikely friends must travel back in time to stop him. Resurrection 2020 by author Herb Guggenheim is the story of their bizarre journey. Along the way, the travelers face racism, fascism, corporate greed, and the postmodern nightmare that was the 1964 New York World's Fair. Resurrection 2020 will recreate the fair in your own mind and make it come to life. You'll experience it as though you were there. But Resurrection 2020 isn't just a thriller. Readers are calling it both savagely funny and gut wrenching serious. Resurrection 2020 will have you on the edge of your seat. You won't want to put it down. Read Resurrection 2020 by Herb Guggenheim. Available now in Kindle, paperback and hardcover editions worldwide at Amazon.com and watch for the audiobook coming soon to Audible, Amazon and iTunes. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. You know, it's coming out that, like, Black Lives Matter, BLM is basically like a real estate scam. And there's an update today. BLM co-founder Patrice Cullors admitted that she lied when she denied using the group's $6 million L.A. property only for official business. She revealed she hosted parties for the Biden inauguration of her son's birthday and all of this. Black Lives Matter is not going to be around for very long. It's going to fade away over these financial schemes. I think and so. I'll tell It'll you go the why. way of Acorn. You know, um, Black li- and they've and they've put themselves out of business. Black Lives Matter... We really don't know how they get their money, but liberal blacks that support Black Lives Matter around the country at the grassroots level, one of the things they're into is reparations. And when they see all these huge real estate deals that the Black Lives Matter people are doing, you know, multi-million dollar homes and they have multiple homes, you know, uh, they see that as their money that they're that that is being spent on the lifestyle of these Black Lives mm. Matter people, and I they be so sure. don't like it. No, the the these stories. Are, so I don't oh, know. Yeah. I think they say good for her. No, I don't see that at all. I uh-uh. but they haven't been around. I I I watch on tw- if you go on Twitter, they don't when like these it. stories come out. People are ticked that are supporters of Black Lives Matter. Yeah. They're like, "Where's my money? Where's my house?" Because they're so, the, the same group are so into reparations. Well, they're communists. They think that money should be dispersed among the people that you know are. Supporting the group in other ways. Who as a, started you know, this group? Because it, it's the seemed- one I can't remember her name, but the one black li- main leader. Uh, she said she started it in a tweet that she put out um, after Trayvon Martin was killed. I don't know if I believe that whole story that it all of a sudden became this thing. It may have, but it it was born out of the Trayvon Martin shooting. And, Certainly became uh, lucrative. But I, you're right. I haven't seen them lately. And I think because there's a lot of heat on them right now, and maybe they don't want the attention, and they're laying low. Yeah, wow. Because there's obviously stuff going on there that's not above board. If if Black Lives Matter, you know, Black Lives Matter, they care about all black lives, not just black lives that are taken by police officers. Black Lives Matter should be involved in this Roe v. Wade debate. I agree. How many black babies are killed every year through abortion? Yeah. You know, we talk about this a lot. The reason that, the black population of this country has remained at about 12% for so long is because of abortion. That's why Planned Parenthood was started by, by Margaret, Margaret Sanger, Sanger to control the black population. Yeah. So, so mission accomplished. You know, they haven't weighed in on either side of this Black Lives Matter. And the, the reality is Black Lives Matter to BLM when they can get paid by their liberal – what Black Lives Matter has become – is an organization that doesn't do much except when you're right before an election and they're uh, 
a Democrat um, activist organization to get people riled up right before an election. And um, there's no money for them to be made. Uh, spe- what are they going to say about Roe v. Wade? Right. I mean, if if it's Black Lives Matter, they're concerned with they would have to support the overturning mm-hmm. of Roe v. Wade. But they don't really care about black lives. They care about making money so they can buy more mansions. Right. And that's usually what happens. I want to talk to you real quick about this thing with Tiffany Cross that you played this morning about adoption and her obsession with race. You have to understand Tiffany Cross, Joy Reid, these people, Sonny Hostin, they see everything through a filter of race and color. They can't see anything unless it goes through that filter first. And I remember when we adopted Emily 23 years ago, um, we met with the attorney and uh, I could not have children naturally because of my health problems. And so adoption was what we chose. We wanted to have a kid. And she had said to us, and this was Steve Kane's adoption lawyer, and she said, are you guys open to biracial adoption? We said, absolutely. It doesn't matter. That's how Brian and I were raised, that you uh, that color doesn't matter. And I said, I, we just wanted a girl. That was our only criteria. And um, we agreed we wanted a daughter. And uh, she told me, I asked her, because there, was a, there were other couples she talked about that were adopting biracially too. And I said to her, I remember this, uh, do, do black families adopt these children, biracial or black? She says, no. She said, there's very few black families that adopt children at all. And uh, it's mostly Caucasian couples that adopt biracial children and give them homes. And I thought that was interesting. So for Tiffany Cross to go on TV and say that abortion is better than bringing a child into the world who may or may not end up being adopted um, is really sickening to me in light of that, it, that it's Mother's Day. Um, and I don't understand if she's so concerned about this, why doesn't she go adopt a black kid or her other friend on the panel? Why don't they go adopt black kids and put their money where their mouth is. The yeah. fact is that from what I was told, black people don't adopt at all. Very rare. No, they don't. And it's up to the white Caucasian couples mm. to give homes and be open-minded and, and just well, and just love a kid no matter a what. Lot of it's, and it, it's crazy. A for- lot of it's cultural. A lot of it's cultural because a lot of guys that are in minority communities, and, and this goes for Hispanics too, because I've heard guys say this. I can't raise a child that's not my own. They they just can't get their mind around it's an adoption. Ego thing. Yeah, and you know, um, when when we adopted our daughter, um, we had one adoption. Well, we, we have an adoption, but we the the way it works, we adopted privately, which yeah. is not expensive, guys. You know, um, but we adopted privately through a private adoption attorney here in Florida. And um, we, it's, what Ka- it's what Kathy said. We told her we did want to adopt a girl. She said, are you open to, um, you know, black, Hispanic? We, in our, we, we said we didn't care. So she, she did connect us with one birth mother who was pregnant, who was white and pregnant with a white daughter. Yeah. And um, she was living in a motel, she told that's us. That's right. And she was a teenager living with her mother in pregnant a in a motel and um, that one fell apart. At the end, she changed her mind. Right. And hopefully things turned out for that little girl. And then she called us up like, I don't know, a week later. And um, our daughter was, um, well, she called. What happens a lot with, with the attorney we use, she's a specialist in um, adoption law. That's basically all she does. And um, women and girls who are pregnant who want to give their children up for adoption go to her. To find homes, right? And they give her. And she called us while um, our daughter was in labor. Her birth mother was in labor, and she it was. I remember it was a Friday, and it then was a Friday, and then yeah. Saturday we went to the hospital and uh, did the adoption right there. You signed the papers. Yeah, we and, met the birth fa- the birth mother and her family. Yeah, we met the girl. We met uh, they they gave birth. We met her parents. We and met she her had sister. no problem. She was black, and she had her family was black. They had no problem adopting, letting us adopt uh, Emily. Yeah. Zero problems. Now, when we got to the- Which um, was great. When we got to the hospital, though, there was a nurse yes. uh, at the nurse's station, and she's black, right. and she saw us in the hallway and talking to the lawyer and saw that we were adopting the daughter, and, and she looked at us, and she said, uh-uh, 
And she went into the hospital room and tried to talk the birth mother into allowing us to adopt our daughter because we're white. I mean, Can that is this? racism right there. And I remember and I told, the birth mother told us this. We saw it happen, but she, she told, told us, us too. It was, it, it's pretty Which crazy. remarkable. And, um, but she's, luckily for all of us, she still did it and she signed the papers. And in Florida, it's different. It's, every state's different. But in Florida, yeah. once, once the mother signs the papers, that's it. It's done. And some states, like I remember Steve Well, Kane, the father too has to sign the papers. Yeah. Steve Kane um, did an adoption, uh, one of his many adoptions in New York. In New York, they had a six week, or a six week, a six month period where the birth mother could change their mind. Oh could goodness. you imagine? Well, the option we had. I don't know if it's that way now. That was a long time ago. There's different options if you're interested in adoption. You can go the foster route, which we knew people that did that. There's overseas adoption. And then you can hook up with somebody who's pregnant and you have to support them financially. And pay their medical bills. Pay all their bills. Pay that's the rent and food. Everything. And, and they can change their mind Anytime. Still, so we didn't want to go that route because I thought we 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 weren't, we weren't rich, and I thought, well, I don't want to spend six months with some girl. That was the way she said to definitely get a white baby, and we said we don't care about that. And she said, if you hook up with a bir- a girl pregnant, you pay all her bills, all her expenses, and then you adopt the baby at the end. And but she said, but she can change her mind at any time. And that happened to Steve Kane once. A lot of people scam yeah. couples. To get their bills paid for six months, yeah, knowing they're never going to give up the baby. Happens but, all the time. So we said, no, I don't want to get attached to somebody and then and then go through that roller coaster. Yeah, be we awful. wanted a very simple, clean adoption. And when she told us, you know, she's when she told us about Emily, she had just been born. She was premature, but healthy. And she said, "There's one, you know, caveat: the birth mother wants to meet you." And yeah. I, I got to tell you, I was nervous because I thought, well, she might not want to let us adopt because. We're about as white as you can get. Brian and I both have blue eyes and we're pretty Caucasian here. She said it won't be an issue because I said, is she going to be okay with this? And we walked in the hospital room and she was there with her mother, her father and her sister, all black. And they were very nice. And we said to her, you know, are you sure? And have you, she said, yes, I've thought about it. I'm de-. She was in high school. I'm sure I want, you know, uh, her to have a life with a mother and a father and all this stuff. She asked us a lot of questions about our religion. Anyway, we had a nice conversation and spent a couple hours with her. And, and then, we, and we, and the, uh, our attorney, um, had us bring a photo album of our family to show that's her. That's right. We brought yeah. a photo album and we went together into the NICU and, uh, met Emily for the first time with her birth mother. It was very emotional. And, um, you know, but that was a concern, but she had zero issues with our race. Thank goodness. It was not even an issue for her at yeah. all. She was totally, and that is the way it should be. But I got to tell you, if that happened now, I don't know if we would have been so lucky because young people today are being, you know, race is being emphasized so much in society. You know, this was 23 years ago. Yeah. So this girl, you know, obviously grew up in a home where they didn't consider those things. And obviously she, you know, was with a white guy who's, you know, because Emily's, yeah. half, Emily's half white. So I don't know if today if it would be so simple. But like I said, back then our lawyer told us that there's not a lot of black families adopting, if any. It's always the Caucasians that are very open-minded. So it really upset me hearing Tiffany Cross, who's just a bigot and hates who hates white people, um, and she would rather see uh, a, a baby get aborted than go into a, she would probably rather see a baby get aborted than end up in a home of two white people. Yeah. You know, if that was an option, she would probably be like, yeah. you know what, it's, if she knew the future of somebody pregnant, she probably would say to them, you know what, it's better you get an abortion than your kid end up with two whiteies. I could see her, that's how sick she is. It's really yeah, disturbing. and you know, when you have an interracial family, it, the only time race is an issue is um, when we're talking about it on the show. There's the only uh, uh, when our it's da- not yeah it's not even when our daughter show. was growing up. Okay, a couple of times I picked her up at school and they didn't want to give her to me. <laughs> That's true. In the office, yeah, we they didn't, didn't match. know she. You know, yeah. not at all. No. They did. had that happen a few. There times. were a couple of times <laughs> Brian and Emily would go somewhere and some people would kind of give a double take and they always assumed you had a black wife. Sometimes, or if I was with Emily, I had a black husband. But you know, my people sister, would ask. my sister's married to a Cuban. So my cu- my uh, nieces, my niece and nephew are half Cuban. It's it's just I don't know. It's just no big deal in our but then, families. But then sometimes people will tell me, 
uh, how much our daughter looks like us. And I get that sometimes. Oh, that, very, yes. That cracks me up. I love that. I used to have people tell me that that didn't know Emily was adopted. People that might have just met, seen me at Publix with her. Emily was is very pretty. And she was a very pretty little girl. And people would always tell her how pretty she was. She really is a, is a beautiful girl. And they would look at me and say, oh, you guys look so much alike. And I would take yeah. that as a compliment because Emily's so pretty. That's funny. And and we would just look at each other and kind of wink. And yeah, people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, yeah. it's I still, know, they, I took it as, they it made me you. feel good and it made Emily feel it's good. It's a weird thing. But it's we don't thing. ever, I get really mad at people who introduce their kids as their adopted kid. That makes me so mad. I have never. Yeah, that burns Sometimes me. I even forget, sometimes Emily has to remind me. She'll say, mom, remember I'm adopted. Remember? Oh yeah. Cause we'll be talking about a genetic thing or something. I honestly forget. And I have never referred to yeah, her the only, as my yeah, adopted yeah, other kid. Than, uh, other than us talking about adoption. When we're talking about things obviously. on the show, these yeah, things come but up. I don't, but I don't, but in regular life, never. The only time her being adopted comes up, has ever really come up is at the doctor's That's office. Right. They'll say, oh, do you have uh, a family fa- history right. of this or that? You know, we guess That's well, really the only time it's, it's yeah. ever come up. Yeah. Because yeah. they'll ask her family history. And we and don't she, really, we know she, some, but we don't know a lot. Right. You know, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Tiffany Cross on MSNBC, who is strongly, she is so opposed to interracial adoption, she would rather unborn minority children be aborted than born and raised by white people. Yeah, yeah. That's how much she hates white people. Didn't and, I just say that? And uh, yes, you did. And you know, I don't understand. You're just agree. I don't me. understand Tiffany Cross. Tiffany Cross. She's a bigot. Is, That's all you yeah, need but to I, understand. I, I really don't understand. She, she has so much success. She's a nationally known person. She's been a national like author and things. She's got this mm-hmm. show on MSNBC. Same with Joy Reid. And two of she's, a kind. She Tiffany Cross is more of a racist than even Joy Reid is. You think so? Oh yeah, she gets. Um, she gets out of control. You know, do these, do the, they must, I think the reason they get away with it so much is obviously they have their, their black friends that think like them. But I think the white people they associate with have that white liberal guilt. Yeah. They're because afraid to Tiffany call them out Cross has had white people on her show that bash white people. They're obsessed with yeah. race and yeah. they have that white liberal guilt and they, they, they go along with what she's saying instead of challenging her. And saying, like, you know, you're being racist here. But, you know, in Florida, you know, Florida is a very diverse state, maybe more diverse than most other states. That's true. And everybody's interracial in Florida, pretty much. That is very true. We live in South Florida. Yeah. And it is extremely, our neighborhood is very diverse. And it is, you know, when we moved into our neighborhood, the family across the street was biracial. Um, the, and, and the neighbor next door had married a white guy, and she's a black lady. So we had two biracial families. Within two houses plus of us. us, plus us. So just on our block, on our street, on the one half of the block, have three biracial mm-hmm. homes. Yep. Now, listen, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, there's much more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Winter storms, wildfires, earthquakes, hurricanes. Any one of these natural disasters can cause unexpected power loss for you and your family for days, weeks, and even months on end, leaving you unprotected and powerless in your greatest moment of need. Fortunately, with the Safari ME 2000 watt solar generator, you'll always have reliable, sustainable power when you need it most. This energy efficient generator is ultra portable, safe, silent, and can power heavy construction and and medical equipment with ease. You can even connect the generator to the solar panel during sunlight hours and enjoy constant power throughout the day. Plus, act now and receive a free gift with your solar generator purchase. Whether you're experiencing an emergency, camping, or simply working from anywhere, you can depend on the Safari ME 2000 watt solar generator for instant sustainable power. Visit portablesolarplusfc.com to get your portable solar generator today. That's portable solarplusfc.com Are your pants falling down? There is a solution. Skinny Clip. Available on Amazon and SkinnyClip.com. Belts are bulky, uncomfortable, and expensive. Skinny Clip replaces the belt. Skinny Clip is an easy-to-use waistband tightener for men and women. It can easily work to tighten a belt on pants that are too loose. Skinny Clip tightens your pants without a belt. Maybe you lost some weight and you don't want to buy a new wardrobe. Maybe someone gave you clothes that you love, but they're a little too big. Skinny Clip can make them fit just 
just right. Skinny Clip is a newly patented invention that holds up oversized pants easily and comfortably. It's easy to use, too. Simply slide your waistband, twist, and hook. That's it. It works great on all types of fabric, skirts, slacks, jeans, and shorts. It's perfect for blue jeans that loosen up during the day. It's affordable and available in multiple colors. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Skinny Clip, when you're skinny for yourself. Skinny Clip is available on Amazon. Just search Skinny Clip or visit the website skinnyclip.com. Are you being hacked? How do you know? Today's tools can't perceive yesterday's attacks. What are you trying to protect? What are the relevant threats? How comfortable are you with your ability to detect and respond before damage is done? Find the answers to those questions and more in the book from cybersecurity expert and award-winning author Albert E. Whale. Hacked, 10 Practical Cybersecurity Tips to Help Protect Business or Personal Information. Available on Amazon and the website thehackedbook.com. Today, we rely on so much technology. There's not one day that goes by that we don't use our computers or personal devices. And there are hackers out there waiting for an opportunity to strike. We've become so dependent with technology that it's important that we begin to understand what it is that is helping us and what needs to be worked on in order to better protect us. Businesses cannot afford to be down, and neither can consumers. Protecting your data, both business and personal, is important. Protecting you and keeping the attacker out is essential to everyone. Hacked will help you with your cybersecurity needs. It's full of valuable information and tips to keep your devices and computers safe and secure. Hacked, 10 practical cybersecurity tips to help protect personal or business information from cybersecurity expert and award-winning author Albert E. Whale is available on Amazon and the website, thehackedbook.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters and welcome our new Patreon supporters. And, you know, if you would like to support the program, a a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There's a link in the description of this episode and every episode and a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. And when you become a Patreon supporter, you get uh, commercial-free editions of each and every podcast episode. You know that you're supporting this great conservative podcast, which was named the number three must-listen-to conservative podcast in America. And Kathy and I are always posting uh, things on our Patreon page exclusively available to Patreon supporters, uh, things that we're doing. We do um, Patreon-only podcast and and some other perks, too, uh, when you become a Patreon supporter. And it does help support the show, which is um, something that we are very grateful to. And our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank-you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Jacqueline, Rick, Rich, and Nick. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. And again, there is a link to our Patreon page in the episode description. You know, I'm wearing this hat right now that one of our Patreon supporters uh, sent me and mailed to me at the radio it. station. And, uh, you know, in the description of my YouTube videos, I do have my mailing address there, which is the address of the radio station. And um, uh, Gary here in Florida, who who uh, does not live very far from us, actually, Gary in Florida sent me this hat. He's been a listener for a long time. And a Patreon and supporter yep. for a long time, yes. too. Big support. And, um, yeah, he's a good guy, Gary. And... Um, he sent me this this awesome hat that I'm going to get. I'm wearing it. I've been wearing it all day, and I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. It, it, it says Trump DeSantis 24 on it. Make, make America a, Florida. Yeah, make America Florida. I like that idea. <laughs> I love it. I think I everybody likes that idea. And you that know, is the dream. Trump at DeSantis. That he, is the dream. Yeah, you know what I like about this hat? Because I, you know, I wear my MAGA hat like when I was at the RV show. I was wearing my, my Make America Great Again hat. And this hat, what one of the things, well, I like DeSantis and Trump in 2024. I do like that. But- one thing I like about it with the with the liberals is they'll squint to see what it says because if if you've got the red hat on they know what you they they see it coming 
And with this hat, they won't really notice it till I get up close, and they'll look over. And then, you know what I mean? I'll get more reaction. Mm-hmm. I'll get more, you know, from the from the. It's uh, unusual. Liberals. When I was at the RV show uh, on on Saturday, making my vlog all day, people were complimenting me on my hat. There's a. Yeah. A lot of MAGA people at the RV show. But uh, Gary here in Florida, thank you for this hat. I love this hat, and I will, uh, it will get a lot of use. I've been, I haven't had it off my head since I got off the uh, air this morning. You saw, Kathy, that they're adding a, a new tax on guns in California. Yes, this is in Breitbart, and it says, California bill amended to immediately impose handgun excise tax. tax. Yeah. And it says the California Assembly Bill 1221 – was amended in the Senate last week to immediately impose an excise tax oh. on handguns, rifles, and ammunition should it become law. And they're going to charge, get this, 10%, 10% tax for handguns. Oh handguns are not cheap. And a 11% tax on all rifles and ammunition and other kinds of guns. I thought they were anti-gun, but they're, they're so they're going to benefit and make money off guns now, yeah. even though they're anti-gun. That seems a little hypocritical to me. So now the state's mm-hmm. going to get wealthy. God knows where they're saying the money's going to go into some anti-gun fund. Uh-huh. Um, so now they're going to make money off guns that they want everybody else to not mm-hmm. have. Well, seems like a conflict of interest yeah, to me. Yeah. Well, here in Florida, Governor DeSantis is talking about passing open carry. And I, I would really love that. Hope he, if he passes open carry, I will carry. Me too. I'll carry my Glock for you. I mean, I carry every day, but I'll carry. No, I, I would too. I'd put one in my purse and, you know, yeah, you, you watch the ID channel and it's a scary world out there. I tell you, you go off to go shopping at Target. Next thing you know, you're in a ditch somewhere with strangled. Well, death. I, um, scary. when I'm on a road trip, I'd like to be armed and, you know, the, you get a flat no, tire, you know, you're out on the road I alone. I think it's everyone's right to protect themselves. And there's so many stories of people protecting themselves with guns and you rarely hear those stories, but it does happen all the time. Home invasions. And people that get robbed. I saw a video a couple months ago. Somebody put on TikTok of a girl walking. They had these street cameras. And it was late at night. She was walking down this alley by herself, which was not smart, but she was. But now I know why she didn't care. Some guy pulled up in front of her and uh, then stopped the car, got out, and tried to drag her into his car. She oh pulled goodness. out a gun and killed him. She was carrying a gun. So oh, my goodness. She, you know, if she didn't have that gun, she'd be dead. She'd be dead. So everyone should have the right to carry a gun and protect themselves you know, against when, um, the scary world we're living in. When I was 15 and I was learning how to drive, I had what they call here in Florida restricted driver's license. You can drive with a licensed driver over the age of 18 with you. And my mother was teaching me how to drive, and uh, we were in a parking lot at a grocery store, and a guy tried to get in the, into the car on the driver's side. And I had my window down a little oh bit. He gosh. tried to reach in and unlock the door and come in. And I wow. and I was 15, and I had to back out and get away from this guy, you know. And you, you're, you, you, why be a victim? You should be able to no. protect yourself. No, you should not be a victim. And just because you're living your life doesn't give anyone the right to try to take it from you or, or rob you or hurt you. And I think everyone, I tell you, I think crime would go way, way, way down if every state allowed carry uh, open carry, open carry, sometimes it's called I'm constitutional you, carry because people would be really think twice yeah. if 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 a state if this passes, I think crime would really drop in Florida because people will think twice about approaching somebody because they might think you know what they might be carrying a gun now because it, it's it, you wouldn't have to have it concealed it could be open you wouldn't have to have it hidden you could carry it right out on the open on your hip or wherever. And people, that's a deterrent. If people see that on you, if you're walking around and you have a gun on your hip, you think somebody's going to try to mess with you? Not, not as likely no, to, no. not likely. That's for sure. They see, well, I'm going to go on to the next guy. Well, I, you know, I was talking to, uh, about this on one of my YouTube live streams recently, and I do not have a concealed weapon permit. Right. Um, I was going to get one recently, and then something happened, you know, when Steve Kane and I had that personal appearance right. that got crazy. If you well, now you might not have to. Uh, I'm going to wait and see here because... Uh, when you have a concealed weapon yeah. permit in Florida, it has to be completely concealed where you cannot even see the outline through your clothing. And because of the Florida weather, I wear jeans, T-shirts, and shorts all the time because it's, you know, today, what's the temperature going to be today, Kathy? 85, 90. Oh, it's it's hard today. to conceal a cold weapon. Cold today, here. 85. Yeah, it's hard to conceal and, because we don't wear jackets here. 
it's 90% That's of the time right. we don't wear jackets. Yeah, so it's it's difficult to yeah. con- uh, have a weapon concealed with the type of clothing that I wear for our Florida weather, which is beautiful. I mean, Florida's paradise. So if we had open carry, that You could wear your shorts awesome. and flip-flops and Hawaiian shirts. Well, and- I will not wear flip-flops. You'll <laughs> okay, never your, see your, me in flip-flops. Your vans, Brian wears vans. You yeah, can I'll have your shorts, my, your vans, your on Hawaiian my scooter, shirt. On my, on my MAGA scooter, there you go. my 150 seat, I'll have my Glock on riding my <laughs> scooter around. People are like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a sight to see. I know, it sounds like Phil Bart, Mall Cop or something on a scooter. Oh, I with love a gun. that movie, yes. Oh man. That would be awesome. Ron DeSantis is amazing. He's fearless. He's oh. a true leader. I can't wait for it till he's president. So many people in 28 in the chat when you're doing your live streams say you are so lucky to live in Florida. Oh yeah. You guys can move here anytime. We know we're it's lucky. the best place to live. We know we're lucky. I mean, Absolutely. this is the this is the freest place there is. That's right. You know, we I, remember when um when football and other sports weren't allowed and uh, Governor DeSantis invited all the pro teams to Florida, and they had, we had the Super Bowl in Tampa, and the media had a meltdown because he had a beer at the Super Bowl. We took his mask off to sip the beer. Remember that, Ron DeSantis? They hate this yeah, guy. Yeah, and I remember when, when Newsom <laughs> took off his mask at the football game, too. Or Fauci at the baseball to game. To take a picture with yeah. Magic Johnson. I mean, you that's know, okay. but, but that's okay, exactly. Yeah, we're it's very lucky ridiculous. to have. And, you know, we, we're, we know how good we have it here in Florida with Ron DeSantis. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, but- when people come to Florida from elsewhere and they realize how free it is here, they're like in shock. Yeah, it's a little too hot, though. I could I could live with cooler weather, that's for sure. There's, so um, it does get hot, but yeah. if you live along the coast, um, if you're going to move to Florida, my recommendation, because I've lived inland. I lived in Tallahassee for four years. It's so hot in the summer, you'll die. You want to live close to the ocean. Die. If you live in Florida, you want to live... Within 10 miles of the ocean, if you can. Or the Gulf of Mexico. Right. The, the ocean Either better. side, because you get that ocean breeze, and it really does and you make a live, difference. And you, you really want to live south of, of um, a, a, a town called Fort Pierce. When, uh, find Fort Pierce on a map, because once you get north of Fort Pierce, you're no longer in the tropics. South of Fort Pierce is the tropics. So when you when you get up in the central Florida, like where Disney World Along is. Along the coast. It's, you know, we saw— The west coast is really nice, um, though. St. Pete, during the, Tampa, yeah. that's all nice. Sarasota, that's all nice over there. During the lockdowns and everything around the country, we were always open in Florida. And yeah. we, we were watching these vloggers from California were visiting Florida, and they were out. And they were in tears because things are open. You can go to a – uh, because they were from California. Yeah. You could go to a restaurant and have a meal and have a beer. And they were and like in a tears. Normal life. And they did find out after all that they did a study that, that Florida – with the COVID numbers did way better than California and New York and that all the mandates and the lockdowns actually exasperated the situation than helped it. It's better to have people outside in the sunshine instead of locking them up in buildings with hundreds of people sharing elevators and, and air conditioning, yeah. which is what they did in New York, which was so stupid. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. we knew this all along. We had said that, you know, DeSantis was doing the right thing. You he know, they, sure is. They really were basing – so much on what Fauci said, and they gave him. I Trump to me, his biggest mistake was giving Fauci so much control. I was hoping, but uh, I think he just felt he didn't know what else to do. But I, I, he was a little tyrant. I was really hoping in his last days, Trump, when he left office, would have fired Fauci. Yeah, he, you know, that would have been fun. That would have been nice. Well, listen, um, we're all out of time, but we'll be back next time. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co host Kathy. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and again. Make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us on. The Brian Craig Show podcast named the number three must-listen-to conservative podcast in America. Remember, number one was Mark Levin. Number two, Glenn Beck's The Blaze. Number three, the Brian Craig Show podcast. We are on all podcast platforms, including Spotify. All right, guys, we will talk to you next time. Is life becoming too much to handle? Maybe you just need a little guidance. Maybe you need a little zen. Find your zen with Jen. Jen L. O'Neill or Coach J-Lo is a certified life coach, writer, entrepreneur, business consultant, and author. As your life coach, Jen can help you discover your potential. She offers individual coaching sessions focusing on mastering your life goals, your relationships, and yourself. Sometimes all we need is someone to steer us in the right direction. Jen can help. She will help you build stronger 
relationships, get more self-confidence, improve your business or job performance, and finally find inner peace. It is possible. She knows how to get you where you want to be. As a natural motivator, with seven years of coaching experience, she tailors her approach to her clients' needs and has overcome many obstacles herself. So she understands and connects with her clients on a deep level. Contact Coach J. Lo today. And if you know someone that needs a little push in life, let them know about Coach J. Lo. Check out her two books, Self-Worth Redemption and Too Nice. You can find everything at CoachJLo.com. That's CoachJLo.com. 